Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I thought we'd look at how to paint orc skin. As some of you may be aware, orcs are one of my favourite factions in the Warhammer universe uh, and during my time in the studio I was fortunate enough to paint many orcs including some of the new Beast Nagger range. Now in the studio we tended to paint them in this nice vibrant green recipe. Uh, this is my favourite and I thought that's what we'd look at today. So I'm just going to start here by base coating with a mix of Skarsnik and Avaland. You might have to play about with this mix a little bit just to get the right tone of green that you're looking for. Or alternatively you could use Elysian Green which is a nice slightly more natural tone of green uh, that we tended to use on things like the Age of Sigmar Oryx. So now that the base coat is done I'm just going to start to mix in some Orc Flesh Contrast. The idea here is to slowly introduce a soft shade into the recesses of the muscles and start to define the shapes. So you don't have to be too neat at this stage, we're going to go back to later on and as you'll see I will tidy up the base coat. The tidier that you can be here will just save you a little bit of that hassle later on though. Uh, during all of the shading stage really. So now at this stage I start to add in a little bit more Orc Flesh Contrast into the base mix. I would say it's mostly Orc Flesh Contrast at this point. I'm just going to start to work this into the lower bits of the muscles and just really start to increase that shading. I'm just dropping in that shading around the inner part of his neck here and I'll do the same under his arms just where it's going to be in shade from his armor panel. Now around some of the more busy areas like his hands here, I tend to slightly overshade. The main reason is I can just go back in later on and tidy that up with the base coat. And that ensures that we get enough shading in there in between his fingers. Now as you can see here most of the shading is done. I've also blacked out all of the surrounding areas as it just helps to keep me focused on the skin itself. So now I'm just starting to tidy up that base coat in any areas that we've gone over with the shading. It actually wasn't too bad this section so it didn't, it didn't take me a lot of time. The next stage here was just to go around and really start to define the shapes of the muscles in the deep shade. Um, so as you can see here I'm just lining in with Either pure orc flesh or also Caliban green will work quite nicely. So as you can see here the paint is quite thin and I'm just really concentrating this line shade around the deep recesses of the muscles. So with all of that shading out of the way now, I start to glaze in auger and camo over the larger surfaces of the muscles. The idea here is to introduce that brighter tone to the skin, whilst we highlight towards the top of the muscles, imagining a light source from above. So this stage took quite a while to complete, 
Uh, I'm working with very thin glazes here, trying to keep that gradient quite smooth. So I think this is what took me the majority of the time. Now, I decided that I really wanted to increase that shade in some areas. So I'm just going around with a Citadel Wash Coelia Green shade. And this is a slight tealy kind of green. So it's quite a nice change in tone here. So I'm just starting to work this in into the areas where I imagine would be in the deepest shade. It's really useful to increase that contrast and definition around these muscles and it really helps to make them pop. Sometimes what I'll opt to use instead here is Incubi Darkness paint. Uh, just using a paint is a lot more controllable and really helps with doing areas like around these fingers. So with this deep shade out of the way now, the skin's really starting to come together. I decide to just quickly go around the claws here with some Chaos Black. And then it's time now to just go around some of these fleshy bits. So here I'm making a little bit of a mix of Kadian, Flesh Tone, Kislev, and Ogryn Camo. Uh, by adding the Ogryn Camo to this, I'm just helping to blend it in with the skin a little bit more. Adding these little fleshy areas just helps to add a bit more interest to the skin. And... I take the opportunity to add a little bit around these scars. It's completely up to you where you decide to use this warmer fleshy tone. I try not to overdo it too much, but it is quite nice to add slightly warmer tone around things like knuckles, ears, lips. Just helps to make the skin feel a little bit more alive. So now as you can see here, I'm starting to mix together Ogren Camo and Ushabti Bone. This is our next highlight stage. And I start to go around areas like the face and just really start to pick out some details. Now you can also use this mix as a bit of a glaze highlight stage. 
just very very thin here i'm starting to work it towards the top of these muscles just areas where i want to increase that contrast and brighten up even further So I'm spending quite a bit of time here around the face as it's our focal point. I'm very careful when applying these highlights and if they're too stark I'll go back with the previous stages and just glaze them down a little bit. So now it's time to add a little bit of a glazed shade around those areas that we picked out in the fleshy tones earlier. So for this I'm going to use Corn Red and Incubi Darkness as a mix. Instead of Incubi Darkness here you could also use a little bit of Cantor Blue. This helps to just create a nice purpley tone that really works well next to the green skin. As you can see here, I'm just mixing in a little bit of KDM Flesh Tone. This just helps to soften out the shade a little bit in areas where on its own it could just be a little bit too harsh. So now that shading is in place, I'm going to start to go around and highlight with Ushabti Bone. Now you can mix this in with the Flesh Tone as it can be a little bit too bright on its own. So something else that I like to do here is just to go around these scars and pick out some slight dots with the highlight. I think this just helps to make them pop a bit more and it looks quite fresh and raw. So now it's time to pick out the lower eyelids and for this I like to use a slight tealy green. So for this I'm using Vulcan green. You could also use a mixture of Cabalite, Sotek, something like that. This one is a little bit more neutral so I just think it just suits quite well. So to highlight the Vulcan green I like to add in a little bit of Ushapti bone. So with that, I just pick out the eyelid and as you can see here, we start to get that nice tealy color. 
that later on will contrast quite nicely with the red of the eye. So with that done, I decided to go back to the skin. And I'm just starting to add some white into that Ushabti and Ogryn mix. Now you can see here I'm starting to build up a slight soft specular highlight towards the top of this muscle. It's something I like to do sometimes on, on orc skin. As you can see, I've done it on this other orc, which is from the Death Killer War Trike. It can add quite a nice translucent effect to the skin. I think it looks cool. But you don't have to do it. So coming back to the eyes now, I base coat them with Evil Sun's Red. It does help to have a bit of a steady hand here. And we're looking for a nice solid coverage with this red. So now that's done, it's time to highlight the eye. And for this, I like to use an AK Deep Orange. You could also use Troll Slayer Orange. I just find that the AK Deep Orange is slightly better to work with. After that's done, I use Flash Gets Yellow just to pick out a very tiny dot in the eye. And now I'm just running some corn red and incubi darkness mix just around the eye, just to increase that shading. So next it's time to pick out the teeth. And on this occasion, I use Sandry Dust. Uh, you could also use something like Carrick Stone or Steel Legion Drab. It does help to start a little bit brighter here. These are only very small teeth, so the shading needs to be quite minimal, really. So next, I add a little bit of a highlight with some Ushapti bone. Then I mix a little bit of white into the Ushapti bone just to increase that brightness a little bit more. So now I'm just going to pick out some little dot highlights with pure white. For this, I like to use AK's third gen white. So I thought I'd include this little bit here and sometimes I do like to go around towards the end and just stipple very delicately with a glaze consistency paint just to smooth out these little areas of skin where I want the final effect to be quite soft. So with most of the skin now finished, um, there was a few little sections like this where I'd missed. So I'm just going around these knuckles, putting in some of that glaze with the Cantor and Corn mix. And then I go around with the flesh tone and add a little bit of a highlight around these knuckles. I also decide to glaze in a little bit of that flesh tone 
into the vein on his bicep here. Uh, you could also pick it out in a slight tealy color, but I didn't want there to be too much going on with this. So just a slight bit of that flesh tone just helps to, to pick it out a little bit. So the last job here was to pick out the claws and for this I used Incubi Darkness as a base coat followed by a highlight of Cabalite Green then Sybarite and then finally some little dot highlights of Deepkin Flesh. So that's all the skin pretty much completed now, and we're ready to go on to the next stages. I would just like to take a moment to say thank you guys for all of the support so far on the channel. It's been absolutely amazing. And if you have any ideas for future videos on the channel, or you'd like to see me cover any of the other elements on this miniature, let me know in the comments below.